hey there, this is it. This is the startup video. Um, you can skip to the end if you want to see if it runs, but I recommend coming back and checking it out. I did a ton of work on this engine, cobbled together a bunch of parts. You know, this engine hasn't started in 15 years. It was a, an abandoned rebuild. I took it about six, seven weeks ago and started rebuilding at least the top end. I didn't split the case, but I got the heads working and as much as I could renewed on this engine. And today we find out if it starts. Garage time. I finally got the push rod tube seals. I'm gonna put those in now and also new washers underneath these head nuts. These push rods have been thoroughly cleaned and flushed out with some solvent. And now I'm just putting a little bit of assembly lube and oil on the lower surfaces. I'm just gonna rest these inside their sockets. The long portion goes down. I think that'll help prime the system just a little bit. See how it fits right over that acorn bolt? that is important that this one goes on this side. It has these spring retainers here too that I think go like this. Yeah, so that's gonna keep it up tight against the cylinders. Just using a screwdriver to drop these in so they go right over the stud without getting them, you know, cocked in there sideways. This is one of the head nuts or head bolts, whatever you want to call it. And it has a sealing O-ring here on the end. Now this is the one I took off of here and this is completely hardened and flat, just brittle and cracked. And this is what the rocker stand attaches to. So there's three positions. One, it skips one, two, three. So this one goes right here. So right now it's just compressing these push rod tubes. And right now it's like this. So I'm tightening this one to try to flatten it down and it's compressing all these seals and all these push rod tubes. I can no longer rotate any of them. So hopefully that's creating a tight seal as it clamps down. and just set this on its position. And I don't feel any rocking. I can, I can twist it a little bit, but I don't feel it rocking up and down at all. And that's just going to hold the push rods in place while I work on the other side.
Okay, before we just bolt these rocker arms on, I wanted to show a few of the details and some of the techniques I use to clean these. Carburetor cleaner, and I'm using the wand or the, the, the extender on this, and I'm just pushing it in and spraying. Let me back up a little bit. So you can see that this one's clear. So you just give it a few blasts, and that's how the oil gets into the rocker shaft. Okay, and then this is the adjuster, and it has this spherical portion where the push rod rides into, and then there's a hole down the center of that, and then there's a hole perpendicular there, and if everything's centered, you should be able to spray in here and get fluid out to the rocker shaft. Now, the thing to look out for, especially on older engines that have been overhauled a few times, is if this adjuster is out of range, meaning if it's all the way in, there's no lubrication to the rocker shaft because this hole is essentially plugged by the threads. Okay, here I have them side by side and you can see this relief here in the threads should pretty much line up with this little embossment. That's where the oil passage is drilled. The other thing to look into is the arc that this rocker arm travels. Right now, it's almost sort of neutral or pointing up. When it compresses the valve spring, it's gonna be pointing down. And if you push too far on an angle, it's gonna push the valve stem out. And that just causes more valve guide wear. At half of its lift, this arm should be sort of parallel with the shape of the head. So I'm gonna rig this up real quick. So now we know the lift is um, 400 and half of that would be 200. So I'm just gonna back it down to 200. There's one. Two revolutions. So the adjuster is slightly higher than the valve stem. These are the link pin shims and they are perfect for this, this valve rocker thing. This fits right on top of the boss really well. Okay, I got pretty much the same number here on the height difference between the, the valve stem and the adjuster. And I think that's because the push rod length didn't change. You know, I can't extend or shorten the push rods, at least on this engine. So. What's gonna happen is I'll probably remove one shim. That's gonna center the adjuster in the oiling hole. And then I'm gonna have to live with a tiny offset between the valve stem and the adjuster. It's just, without changing the push rod, there's nothing else I can do to adjust it. So we'll move on. Inside of the valve cover isn't that clean. So before I seal it up, I wanna clean it out. I just put a little bit of that paint conditioner, the DuPont paint conditioner, and it is going to eat some of that internal rust. And then we'll wipe it down with some ATF. Good enough, I'm gonna put it on and then wipe down the outside after it's on the engine. Okay, the distributor should be pretty easy. This is a replacement distributor that I've had for probably 20 years. This is a spare that I kept in my 356 when it was running. I would carry this around in case I ever needed to use it. I've never needed to use it. It's essentially brand new. This is as close as you can get to the 022 distributor, which is correct for 912. This is a 050. This is the Weber, um, also kind of a, a thing I've had on the shelf for a long time for my 356 engine. I have run these before. Um, they do work quite well. They just um, have to use some adapters and so forth but I'm gonna use this on this engine. They've been sitting a long time. I might just check the jets, make sure there's no like varnished fuel or something in there. That is top dead center. Now I can take it out. OK, 
Okay, that's locked in position. Now, the first thing I notice is that this is pointing a totally different direction than it did in the past. So this distributor, when it goes in, this slot's parallel to the third piece. This one points here, and this one points here. This manifold or intake tube here is a Porsche part number 616. This is for the Solex carburetors. And I've just gone over the bottom here with a file and I've checked it against the head. And I've looked inside the ports and I can see it's got a really nice match. The only thing I gotta do now is remove these studs because this will interfere with the Weber carburetor. And so I have a 14 millimeter across the flats not from a 356, and then this is a standard one from the hardware store. That allows me to use two box end wrenches, tighten these two together, and then hopefully loosen it. And then turn the bottom one. And there it goes. See all that dirt that comes out? Soap and water did not get that out. WD-40 and ATF, I think, do a good job on aluminum. I've had this oil cooler uh, flushed out and cleaned. So now it's time to put this on. You can see the red and, and green O-rings there. This is designed to float. So I didn't tighten it down really tight because I think it is supposed to move a little bit. It does have a generator that spins freely. It has the throttle linkage, which is what I need uh, today to kind of get this to run. And I'm just gonna wipe it down, not gonna refurbish it 100%. Look at that dirt. Looks like I got the wrong generator stand. This is the small diameter generator and there's a giant gap here for the large diameter generator. So I am gonna have to either change the generator or change the stand because these are not matching up. Yeah, this one should do it. Okay, now the inside is cleaner than the outside. I spent a lot of time on this. These are really hard to clean. Pointing right now, this is uh, top dead center number one. It's pointing right here. So I'm going to put the number one. Okay, number one. And then the firing order is one, four, three, two. Just gonna take a quick peek inside here. Make sure the jets aren't all clogged up. I don't know if you can see inside there, but there's definitely tons of junk. Okay, this is what's dropped out so far. I didn't want that to get in my engine, so I'm just taking care of it now. Okay, while I'm here on the bench, I'm just gonna fill up the bowls with fuel because that's just gonna make it start much easier. And it's easy to do it when it's right here.
I just added the fuel lines here. So this is the outlet of the fuel pump, little rubber hose, the hard line comes around to here, a little junction over here to this Weber carburetor, had to use a little rubber piece there. And then it goes over here, there's a long rubber piece. This is not permanent and then goes to this carburetor. Now I'm just checking the timing of the distributor with this test light. So right now it's green and I'm well ahead of top dead center. So as I rotate this through, that light should go off right when it's gonna fire number one. So it just went off. This is um, top dead center. This is before top dead center. It's probably a little too far. Hey guys, it's been a long couple days. We're almost there. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm just gonna be putting the oil in now and I am using some break-in oil. This is driven 10W40 break-in motor oil. Because I have new pistons and rings, uh, this is recommended to help with that break-in process. It's a good thing I didn't forget this part. All right, folks, it's time. I have oil in it. I'm gonna put the distributor cap on. I have my um, control box set up. This controls the ignition circuit, the start circuit. I've got fuel in the bowls. I have a fuel filter set up here with my gas can on the bench. Fuel should be flowing into there. I have the ignition coil here. This is battery on the floor with some jumper cables and that is attached here to the starter. The solenoids connected to this control box. So all the, all the circuitry we need to make this run will run. This starter adapter is also my product. And if you'll notice, I have these spark plugs removed, but they're connected. So the plan is to crank it to build oil pressure with no spark plugs in it. While that's happening, I wanna check for spark and hopefully I'll suck a little fuel in during that same time. It's gonna take a little while to prime the system. Okay, it looks like it is sparking. Barely. Now I'm watching this oil light and I'm also watching the gauge down here. See if there's any oil pressure. Okay, that gauge was dead. I'm going to put this one in, but it only goes to 30 pounds. Yeah, the gauge went past 30 on that, so we're good to go on oil pressure. I am seeing a spark. Okay, this is take two. Turns out the audio um, was off on the last one. My battery had died. I've never filmed this long in a day. So I'm gonna um, do it one more time. And I think the microphone's working. Microphone's on, so we'll try one more time.
Vai lá.